It's great to be in the SEC. Welcome back to the SEC Recap Podcast. I am your host, Ben Warren. It's been a little over a week since the last one, and that is my fault. Had this episode ready, prepped to go middle of last week, but then just had a bunch of IRL stuff land in my lap. Bunch of doctor's appointments, things like that. Nothing major, nothing wrong or anything. Just trying to be more proactive about my health. As I get older, I hit 37 back in December, just before Christmas. And the older I get, uh, the more I realize I need to more, be more proactive with my health and less reactive. So that is my goal. That's what I'm trying to do really quickly. Um, thanks again for being here. I promise it won't be this long in between this episode and the next one. This one is a two-parter. Today, we are looking at transfer portal rankings for the 2023 uh, transfer class. Those just wrapped up about a week ago, uh, culminating in signing day, which wasn't as big of a splash. I mean, there were some big moves, but signing day just isn't what it used to be as far as the uh, pomp and circumstance around it. But today we're going to look at the SEC West, how they stacked up in the transfer portal. Next episode, we'll cover the SEC East. Uh, give me a follow on Twitter at SEC Recap. And if you haven't checked out my previous two videos, that was also a two-parter split into SEC East and SEC West. Um, I did previews for how I think each team is going to finish uh, wins and losses, wins and loss-wise next season. Uh, the SEC East episode got a ton of love, but not a lot of love on the SEC West episode, the most recent one. So if you haven't checked those out, please do that. Hit the thumbs up, like, subscribe. Um, and before we get into the meat and potatoes of today's episode, I did see that Nick Saban has hired an OC and a DC to join him in Tuscaloosa. Uh, not going to focus on that today. I will save more of that for a future episode. We've got a ton of time to talk about all of that. Uh, but for his DC, a familiar name, guy who's been well, all over the place, uh, but he's definitely been in Tuscaloosa. He'll be a familiar face there again, Kevin Steele. Um, I think a lot of people were thinking that Jeremy Pruitt might be back at Alabama. Had a lot of success there as the DC, but Kevin Steele has had success in a lot of places as DC. He's been with Nick Saban before 20, uh, 2007 and 2013, I believe. Uh, so he'll be bringing his talents back to the Crimson Tide um, and a, a good hire there, I think, even if it's not long, long term, I think that is a good interim, you know, uh, get you to maybe the next longer term hire if Kevin Steele still has aspirations about being a head coach in the near future. And on the offensive side of the ball, not as big of a splash as I think, well, at least not as big of a splash as I was expecting. I don't I think it's as big of a splash as a lot of fans were expecting either, but uh, Tommy Reese coming over from Notre Dame. You know, Notre Dame was not the this powerhouse juggernaut offense uh, that you're kind of, or, I mean, they weren't bad. They were kind of like above average, better than average, but it's not a name that I think a lot of people were really eyeing, especially when, you know, Cliff Kingsbury and Jeff Lebby and, those kinds of names uh, were being tossed around. And when you had the likes of Bill O'Brien and Steve Sarkeesian, these sort of high-profile coach and recovery names that kind of come through Nick Saban's coach rehabilitation program there at Alabama, uh, Tommy Reese was just a little different. Again, I don't think it's a bad hire. I have not dug into all of the details around it, so I'll be doing that here over the next couple of weeks and be coming back with you or be coming back to you with my thoughts on that. Um, but just an interesting hire, a kind of different name than we're used to seeing at Alabama. Again, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Um, if you're a fan, might not be what you're hoping for, but I think we just have to let it play out. Let's see what happens in spring, uh, see what happens in fall camp, see how those offensive pieces start together come uh, start to come together under Tommy Reese. Okay, enough of that, guys. That's really all the news I have for you today. Let's get into what today's episode is all about. Oh, I think I just 
muted my video there by mistake. Technical difficulties. I'll get together here, guys. Okay. Um, so what I did was I took uh, three transfer portal rankings. These are coming from 247 Sports, On3 Sports, and Athlon Sports. So if you're here with me on YouTube, uh, you're looking right at it now. If you're listening in audio form, maybe not the best, most engaging episode to listen to, but you can always go to Spotify. I upload my podcast in video form there on Spotify if you just don't want to mess with YouTube. I totally get it. So I took the 247, the On3, and the Athlon Sports rankings, and I aggregated them to come up with the consensus. Now, you'll see a good bit of spread here. For example, LSU has, you know, was first in Athlon's rankings as well as 247's rankings. But on three had LSU ranked down at number six. So you'll see some of these are a little bit more spread than others. Some of them are very consistent, especially as we get more toward the middle and the end uh, or the very top uh, in the case of Auburn and Ole Miss. Regardless, I kind of aggregated these. And in reality, I mean, you, you could swap number one and two. You could swap number two and three. You might even make a case to swap. Uh, number one and three, just depending on your bias and your preference. I don't have a particular bias here, so I just took the aggregate uh, and, and constructed it into what you see here. So I'll go down the full list, even though today we are just focusing on the SEC West. We're going to look at how each of these teams stacked up just compared to the rest of the SEC. These are not national rankings, guys. These are just SEC power rankings, if you will in terms of the transfer portal. And then we're going to take a look at what I kind of think and what a lot of experts agree, who might be the most impact player uh, or maybe one of the most splash players. Maybe they don't make an immediate impact, but you're looking for this person to come in and start relatively soon or make a pretty big impact within the next year or two. So coming in, I'll start at the bottom. If you're listening, maybe this will make give it a bit more intrigue. I'll start at the bottom of the rankings. So coming in at number 14 is Vanderbilt. I think they just had a loan transfer portal pickup. Again, how different schools play the transfer portal is totally based on their needs. Vanderbilt is always going to have a tougher road to hoe in the SEC because of their academic requirements. Um, and which players are academically eligible uh, to transfer to Vanderbilt. So that it always makes it tough for them. Uh, so they just had the loan pickup. That brings them in at number 14. Coming in at 13, and I don't want you to, to take too much away from just this ranking because of all the reasons I just listed, but number 13 is Alabama. And it was pretty unanimous, uh, a pretty unanimous 13 rank. Uh, for just a few pickups. Um, coming in at number 12, aggregate consensus rankings, Texas A&M. Coming in at number 11, close to, close to unanimous, uh, the South Carolina Gamecocks. Number 10, Missouri. Number 9, Mississippi State Bulldogs. Number 8, the Georgia Bulldogs. Number 7, overall, Florida. Number six, Tennessee. Number five, Kentucky. Number four, Arkansas. And then at three, we have the Auburn Tigers at number two, Ole Miss Rebels. And sitting at the number one spot in the consensus transfer portal rankings, the LSU Tigers. So uh, I'm not going to nitpick, uh, you know, should Ole Miss be one, LSU be two, should Auburn be two or one? You know, should LSU be three? I'm just going to take it for what it is for now. We can nitpick this to death and, you know, everybody comes up with their own point system or rating system. This is what I'm rolling with. So LSU comes in number one overall in the rankings. A few key pickups, uh, a wide receiver, Aaron Anderson from Alabama, defensive lineman, Jordan Jefferson from West Virginia, Linebacker Omar Spates from Oregon State and cornerback Denver Harris from Texas A&M. Also, uh, another DB, Deuce Chestnut from Syracuse. They are losing a wide receiver in Jack Beck. He's headed to TCU. Losing an offensive lineman, Cameron Wire, to Tulane. 
losing a linebacker to Auburn and a uh, kind of, I guess, running back slash all-around athlete type player, um, Derek Davis, to Pitt. So Brian Kelly hits the transfer portal hard in his second year, bringing in one of the top transfer portal classes in the country, a lot of people will say. Bringing in Aaron Anderson definitely helps when you're losing Keyshawn Boutte to or Booty, excuse me, to the NFL. And I think they'll be looking for Spates to come in and make a splash at linebacker. But my impact player for this LSU class is Denver Harris, cornerback. He's coming in from Texas A&M. He was a five-star recruit out of Houston, Texas, signed in the 2022 class, he still has three years of eligibility. So he he totaled 10 tackles in five games last fall. Um, He's bringing top-tier talent in that secondary to LSU. And considering LSU just played for an SEC championship, I think Harris is going to be one of those guys that's going to be looking to help lock down that secondary, lock down that second level, and get LSU back to that SEC championship and maybe, just maybe, even competing in the college football playoff. Number two overall in the SEC, the Ole Miss Rebels. They're bringing in a f- several key pieces. Notably, they have one of the most stacked QB rooms in the country, perhaps. Quarterback Will Wa- uh, Walker Howard comes over from LSU. Also bringing in quarterback Spencer Sanders from Oklahoma State. Man, I don't know how they got room in that locker room for all these quarterbacks, but uh, there you go. It's an embarrassment of riches there at quarterback. They're also bringing in a wide receiver from La Tech, wide receiver from Texas A&M, a tight end from Memphis, uh, a linebacker in Monty Montgomery, and another DB from Georgia Tech. And it is Monty Montgomery at linebacker I expect to be an impact player. He has one year of eligibility remaining, eligibility remaining, and he's coming over from Louisville, hometown of Norcross, Georgia. He was recruited into the 2019 class. Uh, Montgomery led Louisville last fall with 11 tackles for loss and six sacks from the linebacker position. So he is going to be helping shore up that second level defense there uh, in that and, you know, stuff in the run. Uh, a lot of things that Ole Miss sort of struggled with at times last year, struggling against some of those better rushing attacks. Uh, Montgomery is a complete player, looking for him to be a future NFL draft pick uh, coming out of this season in his final year. So a big splash play, a big pickup there for the Ole Miss Rebels. At number three, the Auburn Tigers. Now they got a bunch of guys coming in can't name them all. They're bringing in a running back, tight end, three offensive linemen, uh, two or three defensive linemen, a couple linebackers. I mean, they brought in, uh, Hugh Freeze has hit the portal hard. Credit to him. Uh, He has done a great, great, great job in such a short turnaround there in the, uh, the, the transfer portal. He's got him, I think, Three day one starters there on the offensive line. Dylan Wade, Avery Jones, Gunnar Britton. Um, and then in the, you know, as far as uh, Brian Batty running back from USF, he'll, he'll help add to that running back room, share some carries with Jarquez Hunter. You got to have depth at defense. So they went and picked him up. Uh, Justin Rogers from Kentucky, defensive line. Lawrence Johnson from Purdue. Basically, he went out and said, I need guys that can play week one, you know, make the other guys compete, you know, have some competition. Competition is always good uh, to develop talent and to develop depth. But he went out and said, I need these guys, and I need guys who can start now. Here's who I think 
one of the best pickups is interior offensive lineman Avery Jones, former four-star recruit out of, out of Havelock, I guess that's how you say it, Havelock, North Carolina. Uh, he was recruited in the 2018 class. He's got one year of eligibility remaining, transferring from East Carolina. But before that, he actually committed to UNC, uh, the Tar Heels. So ECU had a great season last year, winning season. Um, Joe started eight out of nine games all the way back in 2020. Um, and he moved to center at the start of the 2021 season and started at center in 11 of 12 of those games. And then in 2022, he played every single game at center, uh, really excelling as a pass blocker and played 852 snaps. So this is a guy that's going to come in and make an immediate impact in the interior offensive line uh, really help out the rest of that offense there with some experience. Um, it's a good size, good skill set, and great playmaking ability in the pass blocking game. Um, all right, moving on to number four. Kind of a surprise for me to see this, but when you when you look at these names, doesn't really surprise you at all. Arkansas, Sam Pittman. You think losing an OC, losing a DC, having to make two new hires kind of hurts you trying to get commitments from some of these players. Not in this case. Not in this case at all. Coming in, consensus number four in the SEC. You get a laundry list of guys here. Not going to go through them all, but bringing in a quarterback, Jacoby Criswell from North Carolina. Bringing in a couple of, two or three wide receivers, uh, an offensive lineman, two defensive linemen, a couple linebackers, uh, two defensive backs, guys that could you know find their way into a couple of different positions. But Arkansas is also losing a few players. They're losing Malik Hornsby. He's quarterback. He's transferring out to Texas State. Uh, wide receiver Kitron Jackson. He's going to Baylor. Tight end Trey Knox, one of the more higher profile uh, transfers out of Fayetteville. He will be headed to South Carolina. They're also losing couple of defensive linemen, Jordan Dominic, Isaiah Nichols. They're losing safety, Miles Slusher. He's had some off-the-field issues. Um, he's headed to Colorado, uh, so he'll be there with, with Prime. Uh, DB Simeon Blair, he's going to Memphis. And DB Jalen Catalan, he will be headed to Texas. So picking up a lot of players, also losing a big chunk of talent. I think defense was a big issue for the Razorbacks in 2022, and they need help on the line. They need help in the secondary, um, at safety. Um, so hopefully Morgan, Greer, um, Al Walcott, guy coming over for Baylor, they could make an immediate impact there for the Razorbacks this season. Now we've got to skip on down in the rankings here. I'm not going to go through the SEC teams. Going to save that for next episode. We're going to skip all the way down to rank number nine now. This is the Mississippi State Bulldogs. They, you know, I think Zach Arnett taking over as a defensive-minded head coach. He's obviously got defense on the brain. He knows how important offense is, but it's not going to be the same Offense. They lost Robert Thomas. He, he's headed to Georgia. They lost a running back, Dylan Johnson. He's headed to Washington. They lost a backup quarterback, Sawyer Robertson. He's headed to Baylor. Okay. But they picked up Mike Wright, quarterback from Vanderbilt, capable. I think he's a solid backup there to Will Rogers. Picked up wide receiver Freddie Roberson. A lot of people excited about him as a replacement guy who could come in and start in place of Robert Thomas. Quarterback Radarius Jones uh, coming over from LSU. DB Kamari Rogers, big time recruit that went to Miami. DB Christopher Keys going to Indiana or coming from Indiana, excuse me. And DB Kobe Albert coming from Kentucky. So adding that depth and potential starters to particularly the secondary, uh, as well as adding to your receiver core with the big loss of Robert Thomas. I think that was the focus there. Um, and we see that play it out. Oh, I got to back up. Guys, I got to back up. I totally messed up. I didn't do my impact player for 
Arkansas. Let me rewind. Uh, <laughs> and then I'll go back and I'll hit my impact player for Mississippi State. Impact player for Arkansas. Trajan Jeffcoat. I hope I'm saying that right. Defensive line. Um, you know, they were looking for some immediate help from pass rushers. Trajan Jeffcoat is coming over from Mizzou, former three-star recruit. He has one year of eligibility, so I think he will be an immediate starter. He was originally signed into the 2018 class, but we're talking possible all SEC tier talent here. He could have a big year there for Arkansas at a much needed position, that defensive line and the pass rush. All right, let's fast forward. <laughs> Back to Mississippi State. My impact player for the Bulldogs, Kamari Rogers. Um, now, he, I don't think he's really had any playing time at Miami. So he still got four years of eligibility left. Uh, he was a big-time recruit, four-star recruit. Um in the 2022 class out of Madison, Mississippi. Uh, he picked Miami over Auburn, over Florida, Florida State, Georgia, LSU, Michigan, Notre Dame, Texas A&M. I mean, he had offers from a lot of places. So there's a lot of talent here. It just needs to be developed. But he's moving back home, put on a little bit of weight. He's got good coverage ability. I think he's got good bump and run, super athletic. Um, he's got good speed. Uh, I think they're looking at making him into a big time player here over the next three years. So I don't know if he'll be an immediate day one starter, but I think he'll definitely challenge for some playing time. He's got all the talent in the world to make it happen. Okay, coming up or coming in at number 12 in the recruiting rankings, or sorry, the transfer portal rankings, Texas AM, the Aggies. Now, they lost a wide receiver, Tyron Smith to UTEP, cornerback Tony Grimes, he went to North Carolina, safety Sam McCall. I'm sorry, this is who they gained, safety Sam McCall, but they lost a lot of people. They lost quarterback Haynes King. He's going to Georgia Tech. Uh, running back, LJ Johnson, headed to SMU. Chris Marshall, wide receiver, headed to Ole Miss. Offensive line, PJ Williams, SMU. Defensive lineman, Anthony Lucas, USC. Defensive lineman, defensive lineman, linebacker, DB, DB, CB. Denver Harris, right? They lost him to LSU. So their biggest needs here we're on the defensive side of the ball. Like Texas A&M needs defensive backs. They need safeties. Uh, they need corners. So, you know, it's hard not to look at what they lost on, like in their secondary on that defensive side of the ball and think that Sam McCall isn't the best, probably biggest impact player they picked up out of the portal. Um, he got snaps primarily uh, at cornerback. Uh, in high school. Again, not a lot of playing time here. He still got three years of eligibility, but he was a four-star recruit out of Lakeland in the 2022 class. Not a ton of playing time at the Division I level, but he's got the skill set. Um, he's not afraid to come up and play at the line of scrimmage. He can, you know, probably do some bump and run coverage at corner in a more aggressive system you know, sh should emerge, should being the operative word, as a key contributor. He's definitely got NFL quality traits that people are looking for, but he's just got to be developed. He's got to get the playing time. He's got to get uh, on the field and develop those talents, but has all the capability, all the potential in the world to make that happen. Finally, coming in at number 13 in the transfer portal rankings, the Crimson Tide, Alabama. You know, just they had a really good uh, transfer portal season last year. You know, they, they picked up some real impact players, um, especially at the running back position. Uh, but losing Cameron Latu at tight end, that's a big need in your offense. You've got a new offensive coordinator. Still a lot of questions about what Alabama will look like next year. I have no doubt that this will be really solid. And if you watch my SEC West 
2023 wins and losses preview, you'll see that I'm actually pretty high on Alabama. I'm probably way more bullish than a lot of people are on Alabama just because I got to have faith in Nick Saban until he proves me wrong. Uh, but they lost a lot of guys this year. Trey Sanders headed to TCU. Aaron Anderson going to LSU. Christian Leary, another wide receiver, Georgia Tech. Uh, Treshawn Holden, another wide receiver going to Oregon. Wide receiver JoJo Earl going to TCU. They lost a lot of pass catchers. And that's not normally what you see at Alabama. So you need a good, solid pass catcher. You also need uh, a good tight end to replace Latu. So that's exactly what they went out and did. They went out and picked up CJ Dupree, 6'5", 245 out of Maryland, uh, played two years for the Terps, played 25 games, had his biggest season this past year, catching 30 passes, 339 yards, three touchdowns. Dupree going to be probably a day one immediate impact player, former three star out of Pennsylvania, uh, signed into the 2021 class, and I don't have his eligibility here but I can Google it real fast. Looks like he has two years of eligibility remaining. Let me pop that in here, update it. We'll have that ready to go. So there you have it, guys. LSU at number one, Ole Miss number two, Auburn number three, Arkansas number four, Mississippi State, number nine, Texas A&M at 12, and Alabama at number 13 in my consensus transfer portal rankings. That's going to do it for this episode. Stay tuned for the next one. I'll cover the SEC, do the exact same thing, talk rankings, who the big pickups, who the key losses are, and who I think the biggest impact players will be. Wanted to make sure this episode did not run as long as the last two, but please go back and check out those videos. I give you my predictions on how I think each SEC team will finish, how many wins, how many losses, who I think is going to be back in the SEC championship game, and who might be challenging for a natty again. Hint, Georgia. So, Give those videos some love. And if you've been here before, if this is your first time, thanks for joining me while you're here. Before you close out that tab, smash that thumbs up, smash that like button, uh, engage with me in the comments. Who do you think the biggest impact player for your team is going to be? Um, I love interacting with you guys. I love hearing your comments. I love reading what you have to say. My goal is always to get you know 10 to 20, maybe 30 likes on every video been doing that on most videos so keep it coming guys keep the love coming i love you all thanks for tuning in follow me on twitter at sec recap check out my merch on my bonfire store bonfire.com slash store slash sec recap check out my sec pride merch we've got t-shirts hoodies long sleeve sweatshirts for every sec team i will catch you on the next one it's great to be in the sec every week right here on the SEC Recap Podcast.